I think of Abraham. Think of Abraham. He's almost 100 years old, and he's running around telling everybody, I'm blessed. There was no evidence other than Ishmael, which was a mistake. Amen? But God honored his word to Abraham, did he not? And the rest is history. How many are believing God for promises in your life? Now, do you think the devil's just going to get out of the way and let you have whatever you flip and want? No. You're going to have to stand like Abraham stood. And you must have only the word of God to hold on to. But that's all you need. The blessing for your life always comes through the word. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. Amen. Full of grace and truth. We always like to add to, oh, oh, pastor, you know, look at how long I'm praying more. So now God's obligated to answer. I, I, I'm, tith I'm tithing more. I'm giving more faithfully. So God has to do something now. And you miss the whole point. No, it's believing God. You have to know when there's nothing else that God has spoken to you. Is this helping? And you have to know that the word is all you really need. But for each of us, we have to go through a few tests because normally there's more in our life than just the word. Amen? Amen. And especially here in America, we got so much stuff. And the Lord has to work in our heart, say my heart, to where the only thing that's left in there is Jesus. It's not a bad thing. It's, it's a really good thing. Amen. So don't look at whether you're doing it right or whether you're doing it wrong. Don't, don't, get, don't look at your brother and sister. Don't become critical. Don't become judgmental. Just stay in the place of blessing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We've been talking about matters of the heart for weeks, and I want to continue with that. Is that okay? Matters of the heart. Romans 8.1, most of you know the verse. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus. For the law of the spirit of life, in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Say it with me today. There is therefore now no condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus hath made me free from the law of of sin and death. How many understand there is a law of sin and death at work in the earth? But the spirit of life in Christ will set you free from that thing in Jesus' name. The world won't understand it. Religion won't understand it. They'll get angry at you. They'll get jealous. They'll think you've lost your mind. But I must tell you today, there's a blessing from heaven for your life. Right now, in this present moment, there is no condemnation. So if there's anything in your heart condemning you this morning, there is therefore now no condemnation. And the law of the spirit of life, it's a, a law in the body. It's a law of eternity. It's a law of God. <laughs> it's a new law. Say new law. It's not the law of the Ten Commandments. Has nothing to do with it. It's a law of life. And it's changing you until there is no sin power. Until there is no disease power. Until there is no death power power in you. 
Hallelujah. Can you lift your hands up? I'm speaking according to, this is kingdom here. The death of the Lord Jesus Christ. You understand how important this is? He broke the power of sin and death through his death. But his death must first be in you so that the life of the Lord may then abound through you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Live your life in Christ, not in your natural self. Does that make sense? Morning, Alan. Pastor, I still feel condemned. I know. It's okay. The law of the spirit of life is setting you free. Colossians 3, 2. Look at this. Speaking to us, the body of Christ, he says, set your affection on COVID-19. Set your affection on the economy. Set your affection on the election. What does it say? Set your affection on things above, not on things on the earth. God's presence. Say God's presence. His presence and his power is available this morning to anyone who will wholeheartedly be committed to following Jesus. That's what we do. That's our part. Ordinary people. How many feel ordinary? That's great. Ordinary people becoming extravagant followers of Jesus. Only one person would do that. Have you set your affection on him? Is he the thing you adore the most? So many people set their affections on all the wrong things. Oh, don't go to church today. You might get sick. Really? You think the presence of God is able to care and protect you? I didn't say that. The Word said that, didn't it? <laughs> Faith in your heart sets you apart. Period. That's it. Just faith. You'd rather have fellowship with Jesus than fellowship with the world. Your life is no longer your own, and you realize what God did for your life. You've been bought with a price, and now you belong to Jesus. Turn to someone and say, I belong to Jesus. <laughs> this is why the baptism in the Holy Spirit is so vital and so important. Because it's not a one-time deal. It's not a one-time event that happened 2,000 years ago, and that's it. No, 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 no. We need to be daily filled with all that God has for us. Amen? That is the will of God for you, to be filled with God over and over and over and over again. Amen. Come on, someone shout hallelujah. Ephesians chapter 3 says, Oh, to know the love of Christ, which passes knowledge, that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. You notice it says may be. Is it God that determines whether we get filled? No. It's us. Hallelujah. God will only fill the hungry soul. God, I'm sorry I'm not hungry for you today. My heart is already full of all this other stuff. Can you see how important it is to set your affection on things above? Because God has blessing for your life far more than anything you could possibly imagine. He wants to add to your life. He doesn't want you laboring and striving and struggling. Is this helping you today? 
So Holy Spirit is really important. And he comes to those who want to be filled. Amen. Be careful, especially living in Washington State, because of the things that so easily can get upon you. What gets on us easily becomes the things that we treasure or the things that we value. Is this making sense? So what is continually surrounding you? Because whatever surrounds you always will begin to influence you. I want to be surrounded with grace. I want to be surrounded with praise. I want to be surrounded with blessing. Hallelujah. I want to be surrounded with God. Hallelujah. I want to be in that upper room with, uh, with just those that are hungry and thirsty. I want to be filled with all of the fullness of God. Hallelujah. I want to be surrounded with the Holy Ghost. Is that okay? Experience His love. Notice it says, to know the love of Christ. That word know means to experience. We never understand his love until you experience his love. Amen. In 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 9, you've got to remember that Paul was in prison. Amen. He was writing a letter to his son in the faith, Timothy, who was now pastoring the church at Ephesus, probably the largest and most influential church of his day. Timothy was a young man, and I want you to look at what Paul said to him. He says, I suffer trouble as an evildoer, even to the point of chains. Now, was Paul an evildoer? No. But he suffered trouble as if he was one. Why? Because he preached the good news. He preached the blessing of heaven. He preached, preached healing and salvation. In fact, that your life can be changed and that you can come into relationship with God. And because he did that, he was labeled as an evildoer. Hallelujah. Don't be surprised with a lot of your friends think you're crazy as soon as you start sharing your faith with people. We overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the what? The word of our testimony. And each of you... None of you have the same testimony. Each of you, your story is different. And that's okay. But your story, if you start sharing it, you know what? They're going to label you as an evildoer. How many know what I'm talking about? Why? Because you're saying, no, 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 you don't understand. The law of the spirit of the life in Christ has set me free. You don't have to be in bondage to that any longer. And many people will turn against you because of that. How many have experienced that? So here, notice Paul says, I, I suffer trouble as an even, evildoer, even to the point of change. But the word of God is not chained. And that's what I want you to focus on this morning the word of God is not chained. None of the circumstances of life have anything to do with what Jesus is doing this morning. Hallelujah. In the story of uh, the centurion, remember that story? It's in Matthew, uh, Matthew chapter 8. If you have your Bibles, please turn to them. Matthew 8 and verse 5, it says, When Jesus had entered Capernaum, a centurion came to him, pleading with him, saying, Lord. That word Lord means Lord God Almighty. He began to worship the Lord. Lord, my servant is lying at home, paralyzed, dreadfully tormented. And Jesus said to him, I will come and heal him. I will come and heal him. Say, I will come. And heal him. Was there any question in, in the Lord's heart about this? No. But notice, the centurion answered and said, Lord, I am not worthy that you should come under my roof. But speak the word only, and my servant shall be healed. 
Circle that word only in your Bibles. It, it li literally means all alone, all by itself. So the centurion recognized Jesus for who he is. And he said, Lord, you just command a word. And if, if you make the commandment with the word, that's all you need to do. Because I recognize that your word has no chains on it. That there is no distance to the word of God. And when you speak a word, it shall be done. Can you see that in the verse? Now jump down to verse 10. It says that when Jesus heard it, he marveled. Say marveled. <laughs> and he said to all those that were following him. See, Jesus had a group of followers. Maybe we had all been there today, you know, and we were following Jesus. And he turned to all of them and said, guys, I, know what it says? Verily I say to you, I have not found so great faith. No, not in Israel. Look at verse 13. And Jesus said to the centurion, go thy way as thou hast believed so be it done unto thee. And his servant was healed in the self same hour. The word of God is not chained. Turn to your neighbor and say, the word of God is not chained. Important. Now notice here in verse 10, it says that Jesus was looking for something. Can you see that? He says, I have not found so great a faith. God is looking for something, isn't he? Why? Without that one piece, he can't do what he wants. It's opposite from everything the, the gurus and the experts will tell you. Church, just spend time with the Lord in your own way. You just hang out with Jesus. Don't add him to something. No, set everything else aside. And for a few moments every day, just spend time with God. Why? Because the word of God is not chained. It's not limited by the things that may be surrounding you. And you can be just like Paul. You might be in prison and in chains. But the word is not chained. Power comes through relationship. Amen. And you don't need to be chasing after words. Oh, I got to go over to this meeting here. They're going to give me a, a word. <laughs> what is God looking for? He's simply looking for faith. The word of God has no chains. Go thy way as thou hast believed, so be it done unto thee. There was no altar call. There was no band playing. There was no crowd. The lights weren't perfect. It was just Jesus and this man. Amen? Now, now look at Psalm 37 verse 4. Is this helping anyone today? We're talking about matters of the heart. Psalm 37 verse 4 says, Delight yourself also in the what? In the Lord. And what happens when you delight yourself in the Lord? He shall give you the desires of your heart. Just spend time. Delight yourself. We want to figure it all out. We want to answer the, and have the question, why is answered? But you only need to know what to do right now. Just in this moment, may the Lord show you exactly what to do right now. Do you think God can do that for you? Yes. In fact, I believe the Holy Spirit's already revealing that to you right now. 
See, joy doesn't have to strive. And in the presence of the Lord, there's always fullness of joy. So you might not think a lot is happening this morning, but even when I don't see it, he's working. Delight yourself in the Lord. Have your own relationship with Jesus. Don't try to copy someone else. Amen. Power comes to you personally as you get to know him. And the word of God is simply looking for faith. I dare you. I encourage you. Just believe the Lord. He loves you so much. Here's the challenge. Two people can hear the same word. One person receives the word, and the other person says, well, that's not right. I don't believe that. Who does that person think he is? You shouldn't talk like that. And all of a sudden, all sorts of secondary issues start coming out of this person. Amen. Have you ever experienced that? You guys are awful quiet today. Is this all right? So two people hear the same word. One gets angry and the other one gets blessed. What's the difference? It's the same word. The difference is not the word of God. The difference is not the will of God. The difference is in the heart. That's why the word says, we've been talking about it for weeks, Proverbs 4, keep your heart with all diligence. Why? Because out of it spring the issues of life. Whatever is in your heart, you cannot stop it. It will spring out of you. Hallelujah. That word issue, talking about the boundaries of your life. The deliverance of your life. How many, there's something you're praying for you want to be set free from? Anyone? It comes through your heart, not by finding the perfect person to pray for you. Not by going to the mega church or going to the hyper spiritual church. You know, there's certain churches that pride themselves that they're so small. Alan, we don't really care about the masses. We're only interested in quality. And that's sort of good. But what about the millions of people that may be lost? Don't you think we need to share the good news with them? So which is better? That's the wrong question. God uses the large and God uses the small. But what he really uses is the heart. Oh, may you have a heart that's full of the Holy Ghost today. May you have a heart today full of faith. Amen. Guard your heart. Just put your right hand on your heart and say, Lord, I'm guarding my heart. What comes in? I protect my heart. In Jesus' name. <laughs> Remember over in James 3, it talks about our tongue. That's a whole other message, but have you ever said something out of your mouth and you wish you never said it? It just blurted out. <laughs> we all do that. The Bible says that who can control the tongue? You can't control your tongue. You want to think you can. I just took this class online, how to control my speech. No, 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 no. They just took your money. The Bible says it's impossible to tame the words that come out of your mouth. Why? Because your tongue is passive. It's not really in charge like you think it is. Jesus said, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So it's never a tongue issue. It's always a heart issue. Say heart issue. That's why, church, it's so important to continually be filled with all of the fullness of God. Hallelujah. Because our, in our humanity, we tend to leak. You know, your, the, the things that are in you, they just kind of, you, you use them up. How many, amen. And you need to be renewed and replenished in God's goodness every moment of every day. Amen. So it's not a tongue issue. It, it, it's... The heart issue. 
You might want to write this down. The heart is the source of all inappropriate behavior, unhealthy attitudes, and hurtful words. Aren't you glad you came today? Matthew 12, Jesus told us how this works. A good man out of the good treasure of his heart brings forth good things. And an evil man out of the evil treasure in his heart brings forth evil things. Now, we all think because we're at Gateway this morning, well, we're the good guys. We're the white hats. <laughs> Hallelujah. I just want to be with Jesus. How about you? I got too much on my plate to, to, to spend my time trying to figure you out whether I should judge you or not. Let's just love the Lord together. But in this verse, notice the heart is the place where the treasures are stored up and kept. Whatever you value the most, you'll put it in your heart. Amen? And so our heart becomes like a bank vault, a safety deposit box. And the things that you treasure the most in life, you hide them in your heart. You store them up here in your heart. Amen? But notice what Jesus is saying here. What you treasure in your heart is what's producing the fruit in your life. Can you see the connection? So we look at this verse and we want to make sure we're the good, not the evil. And we miss the point. In this statement, Jesus is talking about our heart. Now, how many believe the Lord's good? He wants your life overflowing with goodness. With blessing, not hurt. No, he died to set you free. Amen. Hurt, when we value that in our heart, it leads to anger. Have you experienced that? And an anger leads to depression. Depression will end up in fear, and then after fear, you'll get sick. How many have experienced that? We see it all the time. When you treasure your hurt in your heart, you start making the wrong decisions. You always make the, the wrong decisions. Why do we do that? We want to protect the way we feel because we treasure the hurt. And that hurt begins to create all of your future for you. You think you're in charge of your life. You think you're in control, but you're not. That thing well, dwelling up in your heart, it's making all of the decisions for you. And you simply become its prisoner. But Christ has come to Set you free. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, here's the problem in Proverbs 16. It says, all the ways of a man are pure in his own eyes, but the Lord weighs the spirit. So what you allow in your heart is what you treasure the most. That's why it's important to guard your heart. Is this okay? Make sure. Make sure that the only thing you're allowing to get inside of your heart is the Holy Ghost. All they were, they were just in one place and in one accord, and suddenly there, there were like tongues of fire that rested upon each of them, and they all began to seek, and they all began to glorify God. It was the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Now, were these people perfect? Were all of the marriages perfect? How, did they all have degrees from the universities? Did they all have their, their portfolios figured out? No. 
They were just ordinary people. But when the Holy Spirit was poured out upon them, it changed the heart. And the world has not been the same ever since. Can you lift your hands, thank God, for this today? Let Jesus be the only treasure in your heart. Every false spirit, every prideful attitude, all self-promotion, don't give it a place in your heart, no matter how good it appears on the surface. Remember the promise of God for you and I in Ezekiel. God says, I will give you a new heart. Say new heart. And put a new spirit in you. I will take the heart of stone out of your flesh and I'll give you a heart of flesh. Oh, hallelujah. Just lift your hands, Father. I pray for each person today that a new heart would override us, overtake us today. And all of the things that are harmful that we have stored and treasured in our hearts. Lord, we give you permission right now to begin to gently remove those things. Because, Lord Jesus, you're really the only thing worth holding on to. Is this helping anyone here today? I feel the Holy Spirit. Most important thing you can do every day. Accept God's forgiveness and His love for you. You got to do it. You have to accept His forgiveness. Which implies you're wrong and He's right. Amen. The Lordship of Christ cuts through everything and his word is not chained this morning he's already offered himself for you but you must receive him amen so this morning let the war be over accept god's remedy quit fighting against him quit trying to earn a place. Cease trying to improve uh, your life. No. Just agree with heaven that Jesus is the only way, the only truth, and the only life that really works. The law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set me free from the law of sin and death. Oh, may each of you as a as a born-again, Holy Spirit-filled Christian man and woman, be free from the law of sin and death. Hallelujah. Hebrews 9 says, How much more shall the blood of Christ? Say, much more. Who through the eternal Spirit offered himself without spot to God? How much more will he cleanse your conscience from dead works? To serve the living God. Is this helping anyone today? We've been talking about this for weeks. Matters of the heart. I said all of that to bring us to this point. I want to talk to you this morning for just a few minutes now on the heart disease of bitterness and resentment. <laughs> Ephesians 4 and verse 26, Paul writes, Be angry and do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on the cause of your anger. Do not give the devil an opportunity. When you're angry, try to find the cause. And when you find the cause... What does the word say? It's okay to be angry, but don't let the sun go down until you fix it. How many have ever harbored something in your heart and you begin to treasure that thing in your heart and you recognize, oh, I'm, just, I'm giving a place for the devil to work in my life and then all sorts of crap takes place. Has that ever happened to any of you? It wasn't God. No, 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 no. Uh, Hebrews uh, chapter 12, talking about this very thing, 
bitterness and resentment. He says, see to it that no one comes short of the grace of God. That no one be like a bitter root springing up and causing trouble. And through him, many become defiled. Remember, it says, guard your heart because out of the heart spring all of the issues of life. So guess where, where does this bitter root come? It comes through our heart. Watch out, church, that you don't allow any sort of poisonous root to start to grow in your heart. Because it's not just about hurting you. You can defile a whole lot of people around you. Has this caught God by surprise? No. The word of God is not chained. And God's blessing is available for your life, even this morning, even if you're surrounded with these crazy roots. Amen. So never think that it's too late for you or your brother or sister. Amen. Write this down. It's important. Forgiveness is the antidote to bitterness and resentment. Write it down. Forgiveness is the antidote. Everyone's talking about, we need to know the antidote for COVID. Uh, how do I protect myself? Forgiveness is the antidote for bitterness and resentment. Well, pastor, I don't, I don't believe that. <laughs> Ephesians 4 and verse 31, Paul writes, get rid of all bitterness Rage and anger, brawling and slander, along with every form of malice. Pretty clear, isn't it? Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other, just as in Christ God forgave you. You have to get rid of it. Amen. Doesn't matter who's right. Doesn't matter what happened. You, you miss the point. Get rid of all the bitterness, the rage, and the anger. Why? Because it's a root that you don't need in your heart. It, it's like an evil treasure looking for a place to take root, looking for someone that will allow it to grow inside of them. Oh, don't be one of those. Amen. Now, we all struggle with this. Have you ever been hurt before by someone? There's three typical approaches as human beings that we take regarding forgiveness. Because we all know this is the truth. Amen. So the first thing we do in our thinking is, well, I know I should. I know I should uh, forgive them. Lydia, you know, I, I really should forgive that person, but I'm not quite ready to do it yet. I will eventually. Have you ever heard that or thought that? Or we can do this in our head. Why should I forgive? Lydia, you have any idea what that person did to me? I mean, I know I have a right to forgive him, but you don't understand what they did. And off we go. Have you ever done that? And then this one, I think, is the most uh, sinister or hideous. Well, Alan, I, I tried to forgive them. I really did. And look what they did. And so we justify the reason why we will not forgive the person. Amen. That's what we do in our humanity. And you'll always do that because in our thinking... We're always the white hats. In our thinking, we're always the good guy. Amen. Now, Jesus talked about the issue of forgiveness pretty straightforward. And I want us to look at the parable that he gave us here in closing in Matthew chapter 18. So please open your Bibles to this. In our churches, we continue to compare ourselves one to another. We want to help one another grow. 
We want to make sure and ensure that your future will be blessed of the Lord. Amen. And, and, and those are good things. But God is searching for faith. He's looking for someone that he can simply deposit his word in. It has nothing to do with our programs or our classes or how, how well we worship or how many people are in attendance or how beautiful the carpet is. And, and, and if we're not careful. We, we, make, we value the wrong things. And so Peter thought he was pretty good. I, hey, hey, Jim, hey, pastor, if this pastor around, I'm, I'm doing pretty good. Um, you know, I've got a few issues, but I, I, I still think I'm pr doing pretty good. And so Peter is kind of in that place. And so he comes up to Jesus and he says, Lord, how often should my brother sin against me and I forgive him? Up to seven times? I mean, Peter thought he was setting it up pretty good to let, because he wanted Jesus to say, Hey, Pete, man, I'm so proud of you. You're really learning how to forgive. I commend you. Peter, you're doing so good. But notice what Jesus did. Because he saw the pride in Peter, didn't he? And now notice he did it without any condemnation. He did it with great love. He says, Jesus, I don't say to you up to seven times. I say 70 times seven. And God simply raised the bar so high that none of us could ever do it in our own strength. Then he tells the story, verse 23. The kingdom of heaven is like a certain king who wanted to settle accounts with his servants. And when he had begun to settle accounts, one was brought to him who owed him 10,000 talents. But as he was not able to pay, his master commanded that he be sold with his wife and children and all, and all that he had and that payment be made. The servant therefore fell down before him, saying, Master, have patience with me, and I will pay you all. Then the master of that servant was moved with compassion, released him, and forgave him the debt. Wow. Notice verse 28. But that servant went out. And found one of his fellow servants who owed him a hundred denarii. It's about, what, 25 cents? Five bucks? And he laid hands on him and took him by the throat, saying, pay me what you owe. So his fellow servant fell down at his feet and begged him, saying, have patience with me, and I will pay you all. And he would not, say he would not but went and threw him into prison until he should pay the debt. So when his fellow servants saw what he had done, they were very grieved, and they came and told their master all that had been done. Then the master called the servant in. You wicked servant. I, I, I didn't think God would talk like that to God said to him, you wicked servant, I canceled all that debt of yours because you begged me to. Shouldn't you have had mercy on your fellow servant just as I had on you? In his anger, the master turned him over to the jailers to be tortured until he should pay back all he owed. I thought this was a message of grace. Listen, listen, church. Jesus said this, not me. Look at his words. This is how my heavenly father will treat each of you unless you forgive your brother from your what? Heart. Because of what Jesus has already done for you. You have no excuse. We have to forgive. We must 
release our brother and sister, whoever they may be. Amen. Amen. And so forgiveness is the antidote for resentment and bitterness. But if you're the one full of bitterness, you will always make a reason why you don't need to forgive. Can you see the trap in this? Because we are incapable of removing ourselves from the law of sin and death. But in Christ Jesus, there is no condemnation. And you are set free this morning. There's a new heart operating in you. And you can tell your flesh to be quiet. You can tell that stinking thing living in your heart, be quiet. I'm going to forgive that person anyway. And just say, Lord, lift your hand, say it with me, Lord. I forgive and I release that person in Jesus' name. Say, yeah, we can do that. Will we all do it? Probably not, but that's something between you and the Lord. So let me just help you with a few questions that might help you in the process as each of us struggle with forgiveness. Is this okay? Am I meddling too much? Okay. <laughs> Thanks, Donnie. First thing, try to locate what's going on in your heart. Ask yourself the question, who are you angry with? Kind of an important question. Why is this important? Because anger is always a secondary emotion. You're angry for a reason. There's a cause. Something's going on. Amen. So who is that person you're angry with? You need to give them a name. Amen. May the Holy Spirit reveal to you that, that name. So once you've located that, then you need to identify, ask yourself the question, what do they owe you? That person you're angry with, what do they owe you? It is something. Amen? Try to answer that question. Once you know what they owe you, then you must ask yourself, will you cancel the debt? You have the authority to do that. And in the moment you will cancel the debt, the power of the Holy Ghost will come upon you and your heart will be changed. Is this helping anyone today? Colossians 3 says, bearing with one another. We need to bear with one another right here. You know why? We're really screwed up people. <laughs> we live in Washington State. <laughs> Amen? Amen? So every once in a while, you're going to do something that really bothers me. Of course, all the people that, that bother you, they're not here today. We're the, we're the elect, the select, right? No, no. We have to bear with one another. Say bearing with one another. Why? Because there's something going out. There's something out of whack. There's something happening that shouldn't really be happening. And we have to bear with one another when those things take place. Well, I thought when I come to church, I, I, I join the church, and I, everything's perfect, and it's going to be wonderful. Well, not exactly. Amen. But notice what he says, bearing with one another, forgiving one another. Say forgiving one another. If anyone has a complaint against another, even as Christ forgave you, so you also must do. It would be great if we never needed to walk, operate in forgiveness any longer. But until our mortal flesh is changed, until Jesus comes to bring the kingdom in its fullness to the earth, 
people are still going to get hurt. And someone must walk by faith and understand, I have the authority to release that person from their debt. Well, pastor, what if they're living irresponsibly? We miss the whole point when we try to justify. More happens in the human heart when you release forgiveness and cancel the debt than you realize. Their heart will be changed. Amen. How many have ever experienced that? No one's already. Jim, thank you. Now we have to release the debt. Well, pastor, I really need what they stole from me. Don't you think the Lord is able to make up the difference in your finances? Don't you think your abundance is dependent more on the heavenly rather than the markets? <laughs> Don't hold on to your offense. That's probably the most positive thing I can tell you today. Don't hold on to your offense. When offense comes, just don't grab it. Yes, you will be offended. There will be something that comes up that you have to bear. No, no, just don't hold on to it. Let it go. Walk in forgiveness, amen. Why is this important? Because if you take offense and you grab a hold of it, no matter how justified you might think you are in your heart. Look at James 2.13. This is a principle of the kingdom, and we just read it in the parable. It says, judgment is without mercy to the one who has shown no mercy. Important to forgive, church. As you refuse to forgive, it puts you in a position where God cannot bless your life the way he wants to. Judgment without, is without mercy to the one who has shown no mercy. But here's the good news, church. Mercy triumphs over judgment. Thank God for his mercy. Amen. Lift your hands. Thank God for his mercy. Just say, Lord, I thank you that your mercy triumphs over judgment. Hallelujah. Forgiveness is the antidote for bitterness and resentment. Forgiveness is God's heart. Amen. If God has forgiven you, why not release your brother and your sister who's offended you? Amen. Why not set them free from their debt? Talking about living in Christ, not living in your natural self. Amen. This word from God is not chained. I hope you catch this today. The mercy of God is always going before you. The mercy of God is always available. Just stay in the abundance of heaven. Just stay in the victory of the cross. Stay in the blessing of God. Delight yourself in the Lord. Hallelujah. Let everything else go. People will think you're crazy. People will think you're irresponsible. People will think you're not caring for your life properly. Just spend time with the Lord. Power comes through that relationship. And you don't need to be chasing after other words. This is the word of the Lord for you. Amen. And the word of God is not chained and it will not be controlled by anyone or anything. He is free to move on your behalf this morning. If you want God to be moving on your behalf today, just stand to your feet and lift your hands to the Lord right now, in this place, if you're watching online, just stand off your couch or in your kitchen table. Just stand up and let there be a personal connection between you and the Lord right now. Jesus is Lord. And today, right now in your heart, let Jesus be the only treasure in your heart. Just close your eyes all over this place.
Let that be a, a new connection for you. Pastor, you don't understand all the things I've gone through. I know. But he's not limited by anything or anyone. The word of God has no chains. And as he has forgiven you and released you from every debt, as you receive his blessing, he, don't you think he's going to provide to you the money you're going to need? Don't you think he will pay your rent? Don't you think he'll provide the food? Don't you think he'll provide the fuel for your vehicles? Yes, he will. Though a thousand may fall by your side, if you're living under the shadow, if you're living in his presence, guess what? It won't come near you. It won't come near you. God's simply looking for faith. He's looking for faith. This law of the spirit of life. It's a law in the body. It's a spirit law. It's not a natural law. Amen. It's in the eternities. It's a law of God. It's a new law. And it's continuing to change you until there is no sin power. Until there is no disease power. And until there is no death power operating in you. Please lift your hands with me. Close your eyes and just begin to thank God. Begin to pray right now. Why not surrender? Hallelujah. Let the death of the Lord be working in your life so that the life of God may abound through you right now in Jesus' name. Lord, let every resentful thought, Lord, let every bitter thing that is trying to seek its way into our lives, Lord, we choose to walk in forgiveness right now. We provide the antidote. We refuse to walk in bitterness. We refuse to walk in resentment. Lord, we walk in joy. Lord, we walk in faith. Lord, we walk in hope and we receive the blessing of an open heaven even as we live our natural lives in the state of Washington. <laughs> Lord, you supply our needs according to our riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Amen, amen, amen. Is this okay? What do you think, guys? Alan, I would appreciate you to come up, and I want you to pray a blessing over the church. Does anyone here today have sickness in your body or someone in your family that got sick with COVID or something that's going on? Several have the, tested positive for that, and that's why a few families aren't here today because they're just getting over it. Anthony got over it. Good to have you back. We missed you last Sunday. Uh, but... We're not limited by these things. Amen. 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 Pray a blessing over the church. If you need, if you have someone in your family or yourself need special prayer, come to the altar at the end. We're going to pray for you. Amen. Okay. Lord, this morning we <clears throat> come before you and we thank you for your many blessings. Lord, as pastor was saying, And I've experienced forgiveness as the most incredible impact on relationship as we release that to you, as we forgive. And so this morning, Lord, we just want to take that with us. We really want to take that with us. This morning too, Lord, we want to lift up and raise up all the families that are affected, that have become sick, whether it's COVID or anything else, over the last weeks. And we just thank you for the recovery of Anthony we want to thank you, Lord, for what you're doing in others' lives. 
we pray and break this thing now in Jesus' name. Lord, you are greater than any disease. Jesus touched the sick and they were healed. And Lord, this morning we can call that out because we are filled with your very presence. And so we can be expectant about what you're going to do. And as we ask you by the power of your spirit to break these things in Jesus' name, we also just pray for your joy to fill all who are sick. And that they might know that you are there for them and that you will touch them, even as we speak. And we give you thanks, Lord. Now be with us as we go out into the rest of this day. Be with us on our Monday and our Tuesday, our Wednesday. Let us fill ourselves with your presence each day, Lord, and new. And know the joy that you will give us in Jesus' name. Amen. Before any of you leave, take a few minutes and pray with one another, encourage one another, hang out together, and let the fellowship of the Lord grow in this house. If you need prayer, come on up right now. We're going to pray for you.